Imagine, if you will, a hypothetical world much like our own, but overseen by a mysterious cosmic entity. While our world's rich diversity of life arose naturally through sheer chance, here it would get a head start, thanks to the observer. With an introduced of a small selection of already evolved life forms from Earth, these introduced organisms would then be allowed to evolve entirely on their own, in complete isolation, for hundreds of millions of years, until their descendants resembled them barely at all. Now imagine if some of those colonists were highly specialized animals which would never have the means to exploit as many varied niches anywhere else due to competition from other species. Imagine an entire world where the only land animal present is a bird, a world without reptiles, amphibians, or mammals. It would be an experiment in natural selection on a scale never before seen. This is Serena, the world of birds. Serena is an ongoing chronological world building exercise and speculative evolution project that explores the natural history of a fictional terraformed moon, two-thirds the size of Earth and orbiting a large gas giant in the habitable zone of an alternate solar system, populated only by a handful of organisms, including grasses, sunflowers, ants, crickets, guppies, and, most notably of all, a single terrestrial vertebrate, the domestic canary. Our journey to this strange world will take us from the very beginning, and then progress steadily along through the eons as the world's newly introduced life adapts to and evolves to suit its strange, new, and ever-changing environment. It would be here that the experiment by a powerful and distant creator would take shape. Left to its own devices for countless millennia, a magnificent new biosphere would form from the founding components into something incredible and new. It was to be a world truly for the birds, but not in a bad way. Somewhere in the distant reaches of the cosmos, a project was initiated on an incredible scale by an ancient entity of a greater ability than anything humanity could comprehend. A large-scale evolutionary experiment on a never-before-seen scale, it would allow observation of the processes of evolution in an artificial, closed system from its beginning to its eventual end. A sterile rocky moon orbiting a large gas planet in a far-off solar system was utilized as a base, rendered habitable through the formation of an Earth-equivalent atmosphere and stabilized into a rotating and slightly tilted orbit to closely replicate the familiar seasons and day-night cycle. Used as a template on which to observe the process, this moon was then seeded with living things like an immense bioactive vivarium, and so let alone to develop, grow, and evolve. The primary subject of the closely controlled experiment was to be an animal small and adaptable, yet with unique constraints to its biology that would provide limits and restrictions on the ways it could evolve. A representative of a common animal group, but one whose full potential would likely never be realized in its native setting, among the many other competing species that formed the complex ecosystems of Earth. The world of Serena's focus would be the canary bird, a species of domesticated finch, and so a nod to the finches of the Galapagos Islands, which were pivotal in the formation of the theory of evolution. Here the birds would have no initial competitors, and so as they adapted to exploit every possible niche open to them, their evolution could lead them down paths otherwise unlikely. To survive, however, 
these introduced birds would require a modest number of partners to complete a web of life. Plants would be necessary to maintain the atmosphere and the carbon cycle, but to keep the initial ecosystem simplistic, plants suitable to the introduced canaries diet would form the majority of colonist species, with a few less edible land plants, such as bamboo, introduced to provide cover and habitat, which also partake in a fair amount of greens and a few insects for good measure. A wide variety of grasses and seed-bearing plants were vital to the foundation of the early canary-based ecosystem. A second need in crafting an ecosystem from the bare basics, though less immediately important to the birds themselves, were decomposers. Dead plant matter, droppings, and the bodies of deceased canaries would build up and their nutrients remain locked up out of the environment without a healthy sampling of microfauna to break them down. Primarily to perform janitorial duty, detritivorous invertebrates such as earthworms, isopods, springtails and mites, and scavengers such as ants, crickets, and beetles were vital to establish a healthy ecosystem. To keep the flowing waters of the New World healthy also required a number of their own introductions. Founded by various algae and elodia, both also incidentally edible to canaries, small crustaceans, snails, and worms also found a home. A small number of fish were included additionally, and would serve as an additional point of interest over time. Those introduced to Serena's waterways were all live-bearing, ray-finned fishes of the genera Xiphophorus and Poecilia, common in the pet trade under their common names as platies, swordtails, guppies, and mollies. These fish would stabilize the aquatic environments out of reach of the canaries, feeding on the algae and controlling invertebrate populations. And though the project's focus would center upon the canary birds, especially at first. These secondary colonists would too go on to play their own important parts in the great story of Serena. Beginning with the most primitive of plants and algae, over several million years, the barren moon was gradually fitted with increasingly advanced organisms, building upon their earlier foundations just as one might build up a towering skyscraper, creating an ever-increasingly complex system. Following the flora came the microscopic soil creatures, the nematodes, the worms, the vital detritivores, and then followed the invertebrates, the earthworms, the crickets, the shrimp, and the snails. As complexity increased with each class of creature, so too reduced the number of forms introduced. Thousands of plants, hundreds of insects, but only seven species of vertebrates, only a single one of them terrestrial. It was this single creature, however, the last crowning introduction to the world that would perhaps most impact it. Nothing would ever be the same again following the release of the canaries upon the verdantly awaiting, endless meadows of their new kingdom. When all was established, and the last components in place, the experiment was then to be left alone, to continue on its own without further influence, but they which were responsible for it would always be watching its progress. The Domestic Canary Serenus canaria domestica, chosen for Serena, was a human-bred cultivar of the wild Atlantic canary, a small passerine bird belonging to the genus Serenus in the finch family of Fringillidae. Once native to the Canary Islands, the Azores, and the Madeira of ancient earth, these small birds became following the 17th century, among the most commonplace of human house pets, 
with a captive range quickly coming to cover the whole of the planet as a result. Bred into forms carrying nearly any color of the rainbow, few, if any, would readapt to survive in the wild in a normal environment. Here, however, they find no predators. Food was abundant, enormously so. Life would be privileged for a time. But gradually, dynamics would begin to shift, as the silent and timeless processes of which the Creator so longed to observe would begin their work upon the birds, as well as their compatriots, the fishes, the invertebrates, and the plants with which they shared their new world. Evolution would carry on and work quickly to reshape the colonists to the environments of their new world. From these few founding creatures, one day would a world of strange and wonderful life grow and develop. The following is a complete list of Serena's originally imported macroscopic organisms. Not included are the innumerable soil bacteria and fungal organisms vital to a stable ecosystem, and the numbers of small invertebrates are approximate. Though Serena is most foremost the canvas for its namesake to claim, an ecology cannot subsist upon one bird alone, and a great variety of other creatures have also been introduced to the world to fulfill other ecological niches. Only once these were in place and a basic ecosystem established could the true subjects of the project be introduced and expected to thrive. Following the departure by its mysterious creators, this motley assortment of beasts and flora would have been utterly on their own, to live or to die, to adapt or to perish, to die out or diversify, in a world all their own. Plants Helianthus giganteus, the giant sunflower, was among the several species of the genus introduced to Serena. 300 plus grass species, including cereal grains and bamboo. Dandelion. Sunflowers, 30 plus species. Clovers, 120 plus species. Elodia canadensis. Liverworts, 1,000 plus species. Algae, 10,000 plus species. Moss, 1,000 plus species. Animals. Domestic canary, Serenus canaria domestica. Live bearing Xivophorus fishes, Platyus plus sword tails. And Poecilia fishes, Guppies and Mollies, a total of seven species. Springtails, 1,000 plus species. Wood lice, or pill bugs, 100 plus species. Ants, 50 plus species. Aphids, 110 plus species. Millipedes, 200 plus species. Ladybird beetles, 10 species. Burying beetles, all of genus Nicrophorus. Crickets, 50 plus species of Gryllinae, or field crickets. Triops longicaudus, Parthenogenic crayfish. Neocaridinae, or cherry shrimp. Copepods, 500 plus species. Hermit crabs, 100 plus species, marine. Mites, 10,000 plus species. Orbitadia, decomposing mites. Ornithonysis, parasitic biting mites. African giant land snail, Acatinidae, five species. Land slugs, 100 plus species. Sea slugs, 150 plus species. Bivalve mollusks, clam slash mussels, 
1,000 plus species of freshwater plus marine. Pond snails, 20 plus species. Whelks, 20 plus species. Hydra. Jellyfish, 100 plus species. Annelids, 1,000 plus species, including earthworms and aquatic detritivores. All of these organisms would contribute to the greater Saranile ecosystem. <laughs>